Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Trigger TV. I'm William, and for those that are in our community, you should know by now, Bill C21 is back. For those who don't know, Bill C21 is a new law that's being proposed to ban pretty much most, if not all, firearms and replica and all their toy guns, which include airsoft, all in the names of public safety. However, this is not the truth. The goal of the bill is to remove all these guns to make public safe spaces and reduce the risk of firearm accidents. But if we look at the bill, it miss its own aims. We're gonna take a look at it. So in Canada currently, we already have very strict firearm laws. For those that don't know, or for those that are aware, in order to get your firearms license to even purchase a firearm, there's a bunch of different steps that you need, to, need, you need to take. The first is to attend a firearm safety course. There's a written and practical test component. After that, you have to apply for your firearms license. It's not automatically given to you. You have to do a bunch of background checks, reference checks, and then you're issued the license. In terms of purchasing firearms, there's a bunch of other background checks that you need to do and other registrations for the specific firearm. And then even after that, there's specific procedures that you need to do to transport your firearms to and from your home and even to use. Currently in Canada, there's really only three ways you can even buy and to use a firearm. Number one is hunting, two, sport shooting, and number three is as a collector's item. All right, so it's already very strict. And really, Bill C-21 is just adding more baggage on top of this. And it misses its aim because it's focusing on legally owned and registered guns. But bad guys don't have registered guns. Who has them? Well, the good guys do. The guys who spend the time to do all this so they can enjoy a sport that they like, a legally recognized sport that they like to do. Any sort of gun violence, gun crime that you see on the news media recently, or even in the last couple of years, if you really look at the articles, all of these are done with illegally owned firearms. Because unlike the United States, in Canada, you can't have concealed firearms. Again, only three uses, and one of them is not to use in public spaces. So every time you see those shootings, they're all illegal already. The bad guys won't go and register guns. Let's assume that Bill C-21 is in effect, that all these regulations are in place. Still, the bad guys just don't care. They're not gonna go register their file down serial number black market bot guns because they don't care and they're gonna get arrested. So they're obviously not gonna do that. So really it's only targeting the law abiding legal guys, the good guys. And not only that, they're going a step further. They're going for toy guns, for airsoft and other related toy guns, All right? So this is already away from real farms. This is like, you're just finding the smallest little thing that you don't want them to have and you're targeting it. Right. Currently, from our research, there's no reported gun deaths with toy guns, such as airsoft. Banning airsoft won't really help with public safety because we don't use these in the public space and this sport is designed from the ground up at its base foundation to be safe. All the products used, they're designed for low speed, they're designed to be used in a regulated space in a safe environment, they're not designed to hurt anyone and there's no statistics of it actually happening. If you participate in the sport or you've at least tried you know, similar sports, you know that the first thing in the sport is safety, right? Safety briefing all the time. Every time you go into a regulated place, it's a licensed place with insurance and everything else outside this space, you're not allowed to, to use your products or you, you use the, the items. Okay. At least in BC, we already have a law that was introduced last year 
Bill 4, which is already has set some procedures to regulate the use of replica and toy guns. You can't use them in public spaces and there's specific ways that you need to do to transport them. So we already have legal restrictions and regulations on how to use them. So we already have strict laws. But no, they, they want to add more stuff on there that's not really gonna affect anything. So let's say they enforce the law, you know, for public safety, let's assume they do it, right? Which is also really weird because at the same time, they're introducing Bill C-5, which is a legislation to remove mandatory sentencing minimums for firearm, alcohol, and drug-related crimes. So if you committed a crime or from substance abuse, you get less time. And not only that, for BC, just a few days ago, it was approved by Ottawa, by the federal government, that you can have narcotics, such as you know opioids, cocaine, methamphetamine, all the other drugs, up to 2.5 grams, and you're allowed to keep it and use it. So we really don't understand. On one side, they're saying that they're doing this for public safety. On the other side, they're passing other legislation that are allowing people to use drugs, to have reduced sentence if they're caught using drugs. So what they say and what they're doing is conflicting. And we don't even know what to do. Because is this really a matter of fact for public safety or is this really a political game? Because it seems like right now that Bill C-21 is just a lie, at least in the public sense. If you really read it and look at it, it doesn't achieve the aims that it was designed to do. So all of this is almost a simple misuse of taxpayers' dollars to fund this political game. It only hurts small business owners and the taxpayers, right? At the very beginning, when the liberal government was trying to get into power and, you know, doing their whole approach, they said, Trudeau, you said that you care about small business owners. So you know, people voted, they believed in you, you got in power, and we have this bill that's out. Not only did they not consult any of the small business owners, they're actively targeting it and there's no sort of compensation and everything done is within a small time frame. Right? This is almost like a blatant disrespect. And even that, we're still feeling the effects of COVID and the post-COVID lockdown all the taxpayers and financials are very, very tight. Not a lot of people have a lot of money to spend right now. Taxes are pretty high. Interest rates are pretty high. And you decide to spend our tax dollars on a bill that you can't even achieve your own aims with. It's literally a disrespect, right? There's much bigger issues out here right now. We have the carbon tax. You have inflation and interest rates going up. The global economy is not doing so good. The Ukraine war is affecting trade. You also have the housing market, right? And it's just all this other issues that you could do, but no, you decide to go, go target the smallest community in Canada and the safest community in Canada. Right? It's, what should I say? All these issues are much bigger and require more effort. You guys even said it takes a lot of time to come up with these laws, to come up with the solutions. And yet you are able to create a new law, C21, in only three to four days and decide to push this in the Senate. It took you so fast to make a new whole law for firearms and yet it you had months, years to deal with the national budget, to balance the budget, to deal with the inflation, to deal with all the, the, the COVID lockdowns, all the other really big issues that are affecting all Canadians. And yet you decided to, to spend all your resources on this and you did it pretty fast. Man, I think if you spend that much effort on all the other issues, I think everything would get done so much faster, but no, you decided to go for us. Okay. Along with this bill, what is the most dangerous is there's certain sections of the bill that's targeting farms and also other subsections that they haven't even said 
that they're using OIC with. So what OIC is, is an order in council. So it's an executive power granted um, to the prime minister that the prime minister can use to enforce laws immediately, which means no voting, no debating. Sign off on a pen, boom, overnight, new law. This is very, very dangerous. It's only been used only a few times for emergency purposes, but it seems like they're just able to use that more and more and they're getting used to using that executive power. And why that is dangerous is, again, overnight it can make a new law and this is very nice for small business owners and for other industries as well. For example, if one day the government decides that they don't like a, a, a high powered motorcycle that you own, by the law, overnight, poof, no more motorcycle, no compensation given, right? I can use this for any sort of other industries. And this is not just an idea that we're dreaming of, this is actively happening. For example, we recently found out that at least for uh, the municipality of Vancouver, they're looking to ban uh, gas powered leaf blowers and similar gardening tools because they think that the pollution is too much. Um, obviously they don't use an OIC to do it, but they're trying to get it done almost immediately, almost overnight. So all these other commercial, you know, gardening and landscaping businesses Overnight, they're like, oh, I can't use my tools. What am I going to use my tools? I'm not getting compensation from the government. I have a surplus of tools. I have to buy new tools. So the government is not even considering their position. They're just doing whatever they want. And then you guys, business owners, you know, taxpayers can do whatever you want. It's, it's a blatant disrespect, right? Another thing, there is an announcement by the federal government that they want to um, set taxes on trucks because they have too much pollution and up to, I think, $4,000 uh, of extra tax dollars when you buy a new truck. But who uses the trucks? A lot of working class people, farmers, industrial workers, construction workers, people that actually are working hard for their job and they're getting taxed even more and they could just do it overnight. I could just write out the bill, sign off on it, goes overnight. You can have this affect other sports as well. Oh, I think that electric motorbike or that actual bicycle is too dangerous. Boom, overnight. Oh, why do you need a muscle car? Boom, overnight, all gone. So this problem, this OIC problem extends outside of the aerosol community. It can affect any sort of industry. And this is the main, most dangerous part of not only this bill, but also this federal action against just one small community, which if, if they succeed, can start growing bigger and bigger and going to your other sports because the government thinks it's not safe and they don't have to give a consideration about you. For the last couple of years, and also for this bill, we're kind of disappointed from a taxpayer and also business standpoint. Um, but Canadians are naturally, naturally nice. We want to believe that the government respects us, cares about our opinions. We want to be heard, but the longer time goes, it seems like they're more focused on their own interests than that of the taxpayer, of the people, of other Canadians, who we, as a democratic society, give them the power to do these things in hopes that they listen to us and help us and grow our country and also help us small business owners because it goes two ways. We help grow the economy, we, we give them tax funding, they in turn help us make new policies to make our lives better. But what we find now is that we're just being ignored, like forgotten, just left in the wind. And they're just taking this power and going, I'm just do whatever I want. Right? Even if you are looking at passing this bill, in its current form, you're not even giving the business owners that are in these industries time to think about what they wanna do and time to either switch industries or give them some sort of compensation or give them time to just plan it out. They spend a lot of hours building up their business. It's pretty much their livelihood, their main source of income, and you just want to wipe them away with a stroke of a pen 
and I give no, no sense and no time to think and or give compensation. Which is, it's not right. It's like a spit in the face. Well, that's it. That's all we want to say. Please share this video, even if you're not part of the Airsoft community, because this is very, very important, because this is not only an attack on the Canadian taxpayer and Canadian citizens, it's also a really big disrespect, and this thing can spread into other industries as well, and it can eventually affect you, and it is already happening in other shape and forms, both for small city governments, but also federal governments. We're noticing more encroachment and also implementing a policies without a, with the disregard of the actual effects on this regular citizen and it's just based on political aims All right this is very important we hope you share this if you have any questions leave a comment and that's it let's trigger us off out fear in here is that the first step towards registering your guns is, is just the first step towards taking away guns from everyone. But that's never going to happen because here in Canada, we have a culture that has that has grown up with guns and that respects the need to, to go out into the wilderness and shoot things from time to time. It's part of the budget.